Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about getters and setters in C++ classes. Now, getters and setters are extremely useful and basically they allow you to control the access to the different attributes and different elements inside of your C++ classes. So I'm gonna show you guys the basics of using C++. Um, in order to do that, we're gonna use a little example. So up here I have a class that I created and it's called Movie. And this is basically just like allowing us to represent a movie inside of our program. So I have a few different attributes. The movie is going to have a title. It's going to have a director. It's also going to have a rating. So those are three different attributes of a movie, right? We could basically say like, this is our movie. This is what it's going to be. That's what it's going to have. And down here we have a constructor. So I'm just passing in the title, the director, and then also the rating. And then over here, we're assigning those values to the values inside of the object. This is all pretty standard stuff. And if you've been following along with the course up to this point, this should kind of make sense, you know, what I'm doing over here. I'm essentially just defining a, a movie data type. And down here, I actually created a movie. So I created a movie and it's called Avengers. And the title is the Avengers director is Joss Whedon and the rating is PG-13. So I'm, I'm creating an actual movie and you'll see down here, I can print out the rating. So why don't we run our program? We'll just sort of get on the same level. So over here I have PG-13, so it's printing out the rating. Everything works, everything looks good. Now, here's the thing. A lot of times in C++, when we're creating something like a class up here, like this movie, we're gonna wanna be able to control uh, what information can be stored for a particular movie. And let me give you an example. So down here, I have this um, rating as PG-13, right? And generally for movies, there's you know a certain number of ratings that you can have. So it'd be like G, PG, uh, PG-13, R, and then NR, right? So not rated. So just for our purposes, let's say that these are all the ratings that you can give to a movie. G, PG, PG-13, R, and NR, right? I'm sure there's some more that we could think of, but Let's just say that those are the ratings that we're gonna say are valid for a movie. Those are the ratings that are gonna be allowed for a particular movie. Well, over here, I'm inserting PG-13, but let's say I wanted to instead enter in something else. There's nothing stopping me from just entering in nonsense, like dog. Right? There's nothing that's stopping me from just typing in some nonsense rating there um, and then running the program and being able to store it inside of my movie, right? I, in other words, I can set the rating equal to dog, even though that's not technically like one of the official ratings that we can have. And there's a lot of circumstances where there's gonna be things like this, for example, you know, valid ratings that you're gonna want to enforce. In other words, like when you're writing this program, you might not want an object, you might not want a movie object to be created that's not using a valid rating. Like you wouldn't want this to be able to happen down here. You wouldn't want them to be able to um, put a rating in as dog. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can essentially just enforce that, how we could make it so that the user can only create an object, a movie object with a valid rating. And to do that, we can use something called getters and setters. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do after I turn that back is I'm gonna head up here into my class. So up here in my movie class, and I wanna show you guys uh, one thing. You'll see up here I have this keyword public. And essentially when I say public and I put all this stuff underneath public, what that means is that all of this stuff is public. And basically when something's public, it means that any other program, any other code can access it. So essentially any code outside of this class is able to access the title of the movie, the director, the rating, and the constructor. So down here, I'm able to print out Avengers.rating because rating is public, right? So I can print this out because it's underneath this little public keyword. But there's another keyword that we can use in C++, which is called private. And I can do the same thing as I did with public. I can just say private. And any attributes, any variables, any functions, anything that I put underneath this private keyword is actually gonna be private. So for example, if I was to take this string rating and I was to put this under here, under this private, what this means is now only code inside of this movie class is able to access the rating attribute. Only code that's inside the movie can access the rating. So if I was to come down here now and try to print out avengers.rating, 
I'm not gonna be able to do that anymore. And you're gonna see that we're gonna get an error. So you can see this highlights in red, basically telling us that you can't print out Avengers.rating because it's private. So I no longer have access to the rating inside of my main function. Now, one thing I will point out is I have access to the rating here in the constructor. That's because the rating variable, the rating attribute is in the same class as this constructor. So it's able to access it. But this main function isn't able to access it and any code inside the main function can't because it's not inside of that class. So that's basically the difference between public and private. And we can leverage public and private in order to control what ratings are able to get set for this movie. So let me show you guys how we can do this. The first thing I wanna do is underneath this public block, I'm gonna create a public function and I'm gonna call it set rating. So actually this is gonna be void and I'm just gonna call it set rating. And this is gonna take as a parameter, it's gonna take one uh, value, it's gonna be a string a rating. So this is gonna take a rating as a parameter. Down here inside of this set rating function, I'm basically gonna say rating is equal to a rating. So now whenever I wanna give a value to the rating, I'm gonna make it so we have to go through this set rating function. So over here, instead of saying rating is equal to a rating, I'm instead I'm just gonna say set rating and I'm gonna pass in a rating. And so now whenever we set the rating, it's gonna go through this set rating function. And for example, if I wanted to modify the rating down here, so if I wanted to say like, Avengers.rating is equal to dog. I'm not gonna be able to do this, again, because rating is private, so I can't access it over here. But if I wanna modify the rating, I can just go through this set rating function because it's public. So over here, if I wanted to modify the rating, instead of saying Avengers.rating, I could say Avengers.set rating, and I could pass into this as a parameter dog. All right, so now anytime we're setting the rating, either up here in the constructor or down here in the actual program, we have to go through this set rating function. And that's gonna be really useful. So essentially what we can do now is we can set up some rules. So I can set up some rules inside of this set rating function for what ratings are gonna be valid. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Essentially what I'll do is I'll create an if statement. And if the rating that gets passed in is one of the valid ratings like G, PG, PG-13, R, or NR, then we'll let them set it. Otherwise, we'll be able to essentially like throw an error or we'll be able to say like, hey, this is an invalid rating. So down here, I'm just gonna create an if statement and I'm just gonna say if, and I'm basically just gonna check to see if the rating is one of the valid ratings. So we can check to see if a rating is equal to G or a rating is equal to PG, and I can keep doing this for each of the valid ratings. So I'll keep doing this over here, and I'm just gonna say, or A rating is equal to PG 13, or A rating is equal to R, and then there's one more which is going to be, or A rating is equal to NR. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating this long winded if statement and it's checking all of these conditions. So it's checking to see if a rating is G or if it's equal to PG or if it's equal to PG 13 or R or finally NR. Now, if it's equal to one of those, right? If it's equal to one of those valid ratings, then we can just go ahead and set it normally. So I could say like rating is equal to a rating, right? Because they entered in a valid rating, so it's gonna be fine. But here's the thing, if they didn't enter in a valid rating, that means that we're not gonna be able to set it as the rating that they entered. So I can say else, and otherwise, why don't we just go ahead and set rating equal to NR? So we'll say that if they entered in an invalid rating, like if they tried to set an invalid rating, for the rating for the movie, we're just gonna go ahead and set it to NR because they didn't enter in a valid rating, so it's just gonna be not rated. So here's the thing, now whenever we want to set the rating, we have to go through this set rating function. So for example, I could come over here and I could say Avengers set rating dog, 
And then if I printed out the rating, it's actually gonna say NR because they entered in an invalid rating. It's just gonna default to NR. Um, but here's the other problem is when I, I can't actually print out the rating. So I can't access Avengers.rating because it's private, remember. So what we can do is we can create another function up here and this one is going to be a string. So it's gonna return a string and I'm just gonna call it get rating and it's not gonna take any parameters. It's just going to return rating. So it'll just return the rating. And so now if I wanted to print this out, I could say avengers.get rating and I'll be able to print it out. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So down here, I set avengers rating equal to dog. That's an invalid rating. So now when I get the rating and I print it out, we should just print out NR. And actually it looks like I have a typo here. So I forgot to put a double equals. In there, let me see if I did that over here too. Nope, okay, so we should be able to run this now. Yeah, so down here you'll see that we're printing out NR. So I tried to set the rating equal to dog. That was an invalid rating. So when I went to get it, it's just giving me NR. And that's gonna work for anything. So for example, over here, when I just first created this, I set PG-13. That's a valid rating, right? That is one of the official ratings that we can use. So when I run this, it's gonna have that. It'll have a rating of PG-13. But if I tried to set this to like PG-15 or something, that's not a valid rating, right? So when I run the program, it's gonna basically say that it's not rated because we didn't enter in a valid rating. And you know, you could essentially do whatever you wanted there. The point that I'm trying to make though is that there's gonna be certain times where you wanna control what values or you know how the user can interact with the attributes of a class or of an object in our case we wanted to be able to restrict what types of ratings were able to be stored inside of a movie so i was able to set the attribute equal to private which meant nobody could access it directly they couldn't just say like hey the rating is equal to this or the rating is equal to that Instead, if they wanted to set a rating, they had to go through this set rating function and they had to go through our little if statement here. And that is an awesome way to control access to the individual elements or the individual attributes in a specific object. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.